Matt, you guys, um, the, the stat that stands out the most is that you out-rebounded them 50 to 34. How are you able to, to do that against a team that's the eighth in the country uh, rebounding? A lot of it was being a tough team defensively. And, um, you know, a lot of credit goes to the guards. You know, bigs are always, um, you know, required to rebound a lot. But the guards did a great job of rebounding down. And, um, you know, when there's tall trees in there, they'd come swoop in and grab some boards and make it really tough for some of their big guys to try to get offensive rebounds. Um, they crowded the paint, which helped a ton. And um, in the end, we were able to, you know, be the more physical team defensively. How much were you, was it important you were able to neutralize Devin Thomas who only finished with four? Yeah, it was huge. And um, I know how to guard him a lot. James, Isaiah, almost all the bigs did. And one thing that really helps is, you know, with pack line defense, we're crowding him. Um, we know he liked to face up and sort of drive. And a couple of times he got us um, early in the game, but we were able to fix that. And, uh, you know, because our teammates were able to help us and make it a crowded floor, it was, it was hard for him to score. Any of you, you, you held them to a season low in points and shooting percentage. Um, obviously, you always focus on defense going in. Was that even more of an emphasis this week? And did you work on it with the time off that you had? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I'll take this one. Um, we knew they were a team that liked to run. Um, Miller McIntyre was a guy that we had a corral in transition. And you could sort of see to start off the second half, they had, you know, 10 quick points in transition and uh, got away from us a little bit there. But, you know, overall, we definitely focused on keeping them as a half-court team and then boxing out. And, um, you know, if we were able to play defensively and uh, really physically and rebound and uh, control their transition, then that would help us, and that's what we ended up doing. Dee, can you talk about that uh, the stretch to end the first half? The last 9.30, they didn't get a field goal, and you guys went on a – a monster tear there, and you were really just seizing um, opportunities to capitalize off turnovers. I mean, it's like Matt said, you know, we wanted to play defense first and give them one shot and, you know, play with a good pace. And I think that's what we did. I think we made, you know, the right passes and the right, you know, made the right op opportunities, you know, happen with our, with our looks and our offense. Do you think the team is finally kind of coming into its own and finding its identity now that you're 12 games in? I mean, yeah, every every day we get better. You know, we come to practice um, to work hard and, you know, work on the things that we do well and that we continue to do in the game. And I think that's what worked today. We did what we do in practice. Matt, I know Coach won't play it up a lot, but for you guys to get the win for him tonight, his 100th win here, what did it mean for you guys? You know, it meant a lot. And I think everyone knew going in that it could be his you know, 100th win. And um, especially with it being the Skip Prosser Classic, I think that sort of, you know, made it a little bit more special for him. And um, I'm sure he'll maybe note on it a little bit. But, you know, we were all excited for him. And it's something where, um, you know, we wanted to get over that hump. We didn't want to have to lose a game and look for it, 100th win, 100th win, try to keep searching for it. So I was glad we got it tonight. Did Coach Mack uh, talk about Coach Prosser at all in preparation for this game? Yeah, uh, I mean, every every time we face Wake Forest, he always talks about what kind of a, a great, great guy Coach Prosser was. He gives us a quote or two that Coach Prosser uh, used and, uh, you know, lets us use it to, uh, as motivation for him because, you know, he, he looked up to him so, so much and uh, he was such a great friend to him. D, can this win set you guys up now for you going into the Big East schedule? You beat a fairly good Wake Forest team with a great record coming in. How does this set you up for for St. John's and then the Big East schedule coming up? Uh, it definitely helps. You know, going into the Big East with a win is, you know, very positive for the team. And just it being our first year in the Big East, I think everybody's really excited to get started. Coming into the game, you know, our biggest, uh, well, Two of our concerns were their offense in transition. We felt like Cody Miller, McIntyre, and Madison Jones are extremely quick. They do a great job of pushing the pace, and they play with a lot of freedom. And then uh, Wake Forest on the glass. You know, they were out rebounding their opponents almost by a plus 10 margin. And when you know uh, those things are um, things that we want to have as staples in our program of not allowing teams to play out in transition and get easy baskets, put teams in the half court, and then obviously not give up second and third shot opportunities. And so um, they only got 10 today to out-rebound you know, an ACC team by 16 rebounds. 
take care of the ball with, you know, 17 assists, 12 turnovers. And, um, you know, I thought after the first eight to 10 minutes, our defense was, was really good. What were you guys able to do to neutralize uh, Devin Thomas? He only had four. Well, we got him in foul trouble first, you know. Um, he changes the game for him. You know, he, uh, he got Matt Stainbrook in foul trouble, and it was almost like in our mind as a staff, it was a race to see who, who was going to get two um, first. And, you know, fortunately, you know, we pulled out Matt, and then Devin Thomas got a second one. And then the, the, I think when we really started to get our separation, he wasn't on the floor. And so um, on the defensive end, he's strong enough to keep Matt away from the basket. On the offensive end, he provides a, uh, a tough matchup because, you know, he can shoot the 10- to 12-footer, and he can really drive you. And even though we knew he was going left, you know, there's some guys that still have an ability to get to the strong hand. Samaj is one of them, uh, and, and he's another at his position. So uh, we were fortunate that he got in foul trouble before Matt Stainbrook did. You talked about the separation. You guys forced eight turnovers in a row and went on that huge run to end the half. Um, just talk about that sequence and how that just di dictated the outcome of the game, really. Well, it was, a probably, a, it was probably a combination of factors. I think, number one, you have a, a young team in Wake Forest that's playing its true uh, first true road game of the year. Tennessee was in the same boat, obviously, earlier in the year. And we felt like um, you know, we really wanted to be active. You know, we wanted to make sure that you know, we, we were pressuring, we were in our gaps, we were trying to make the floor crowded. And I thought we did that, and I thought they, that forced a couple turnovers, and fortunately we were able to capitalize and, and turn those turnovers into touchdowns. Seven assists from D. Is this the you, way you want I him thought playing? You, I thought you were barred here from. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly how, how I want D playing. D. D has really, really accepted his role. And I said on the radio show, that's, that's not an easy thing. Um, you know, everybody wants their name and lights. Everybody wants to, uh, you know, be one of the top scorers. And that's not to say that D won't have some games where he may lead us in scoring. If, if teams, you know, don't play him or they, they choose to go under <coughs> ball screens, you know, D's got that, uh, the confidence from his coaches to take open shots. But I want him to be a table setter, and he's really, really relished in that role. He's done a great job. Um, whether it's feeding Matt Stainbrook in the post, whether it's finding Samaj Christian with advanced passes, um, you know, he, he's doing a really, really good, finding Miles Davis in transition, he's doing a really good job of uh, setting up his teammates. Coach, a milestone win for you in a game like this. Uh, how much does that combination uh, mean to you, I guess? Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy for our team, you know, to get a, a win against a, a quality ACC opponent. You know, Skip means a whole lot to me, the game aside. Um, I didn't need or we didn't need the game to be played in, in order for me to have the memories that I have. And so uh, Skip said it best, players win games. You know, um, I don't have a career record. And I'll just sort of stick with what uh, Skip used to say because I, I think it's very appropriate. It seems like after every game, we're talking about James Farr and the lift he gives you off the bench. Have you seen another player that's improved so drastically as he has from freshman to sophomore year? Um, you know, not off the top of my head. You know, um, you know, B.J. Raymond had a really good jump from his freshman to sophomore year. Uh, but, but James was, and maybe Jason Love. He may not have produced in terms of points and rebounds, but Jason, you know, was a self-made player. And I really feel like that's what, that's what James has become. You know, James has spent a lot of time in the gym uh, shooting. And it's pretty easy to do that when you're getting 20, 25 minutes a game. It's really hard when you never take your warm-up off. And he hardly took his off. I think he played less than 75 minutes the entire season last year. And so um, for him to carve out the role that he's done, that he's carved out, you know, a lot of credit. All the credit goes to James Farr. How important is it to see this production from your post uh, the last three games at the Big East Club? Really important. We're going to play some rugged, physical, athletic, long teams. Um, and, you know, if we get Jalen going and Eric gets back healthy, you know, I'll put our post play up against, uh, you know, any team in the country. And, you know, there might be better athletes. Uh, but I think we have a really good combination of, of things around the basket, you know, whether it's Isaiah Fillmore, especially when he's rebounding the way he is on the offensive end. Matt, he's got a high IQ. He can, he can deal with double teams. He can score. He can draw fouls. James can 
offensive rebounds, stretch the defense. I think Jalen is, is the speed of the game he catches up to. Um, you know, he can provide shot blocking and, and rebounding on both ends of the floor. And, you know, Eric's always been a high energy player. And um, so we need those two to, to really come along. And when they do that, I think our front court is as good as anywhere. When you look back at the non-conference slate, you finished 10 and three, best since you know in five years. How do you kind of assess um, where the team is now after that part of the season is over? On to the next challenge. You know, I think, um, you know, you, you you can really lose your way if you start looking at the rearview mirror or start reading your press clippings. You know, really, really uh, excited about what we did, but did is the operative word. Now it's time to move forward. Um, Xavier Nation's been excited about the Big East for whatever it's been, four or five months. Uh, and we're going to get our first true test, first test uh, in that conference. We're one of the most talented teams uh, college basketball has to offer in St. John's.